up, here's the story about a little guy that lives in a blue world. And all day and all night and everything he sees is just blue like him. So let's step through these frame components. We have some base plates. One of these is 1.6 millimeters. The other one is two millimeters. They sit either side of a 4.1 millimeter uh, spacer here. And uh, that allows us to sandwich the arms, which are also four to 4.1 millimeters in place. So then these, uh, these stanchions or side plates are also two millimeters and they support a 1.6 millimeter camera plate. So it's quite a little bit different in its uh, design and layout than the other quads I've been building in this series and that's part of the reason I wanted to bring it to you as well as the fact that I do think it is a, uh, a, a well-performing quad. In the hardware kit it has uh, nickel-plated uh, steel screws to hold the frame together and some steel M3 by 6 screws and these, uh, these aluminium standoffs that help to hold the side plates apart. They run horizontally where we've traditionally used them in vertically in most quads. Uh, here they are used a little bit differently. The quality of the carbon fibre I think is excellent and uh, it is a coarse weave on the outside but as I'm learning that's really just an appearance layer, it's what's inside that counts and uh, I can say that uh, it, is, uh, it is good materials. However, the quality of the machining and workmanship uh, has left a little bit to be desired. I think it was my first two frames. I was early on board with the Krieger, so maybe it was an early issue. But uh, some here's a camera front plate or camera mounting plate, and uh, I hope that might be visible in the camera there. I have had um, the first two Krieger kits had machining issues. This was uh, one of them on one of the Kriegers. Now Andy Shen, the designer, lives almost exactly the other side of the world in New York, but he worked his ass off uh, to get me a replacement through the Australian distributor uh, as soon as possible. So um, yeah, it was good service, but I have seen some issues. The second Krieger had an issue with the uh, side plate and machining error at the bottom of that so um, but the last two have been fine and uh, so maybe the issues have been resolved now as for camera mounting this is the side this is the so the camera plate that I'll be using and uh, it's traditionally designed I think for a board camera I do want to try and use a HS 1177 and try and find a way to mount the 1177 in there uh, probably just with a lot of hot glue. I was editing the video footage and I realised that I deleted the clip of uh, where I filmed me weighing the naked frame uh, before I assembled it. So um, this is what it looks like when it's all assembled and um, I'm sorry but I've got to try and guess what it weighed and based on the website and uh, my gut feeling, I'm going with 98 grams for a bare frame and 104 grams for the frame uh, with a PDB, which is how I'm weighing all of the quads. Uh, so 104 grams and the frame costs US $90 or AUD, Australian $130 plus shipping. And the stance of the quad motor centres is an X and it's 142 millimetres um, front to rear and left to right. The first step I've taken is the 1.6 millimetre base plate has had some M3 by 20 nylon screws passed through it and uh, held on the other side with some nylon nuts. Doesn't matter which side, just poke them through the inside holes and, uh, and screw them down and this will form the start of the electronic stack. Every Krieger I've built has been different and this is no exception. Now I've nominated the front of the quad, it could either be in this side or this side, but so because of the position of these slots. Uh, now the PDB has been prepared, I've pre-tinned my solder pads, I've put the 12 volt back on there and uh, that's pinned through 
and uh, on the other side now you can see the LC filter is hot glued to the base of the PDB. This was something I was struggling to see where I could mount this in a convenient location so this is where it's going to end up and uh, I've just brought power and my ground directly from the underside of the Palolu uh, pins and then I've put a pair of header pins on here which is where I can put a plug for my VTX and camera this will slide over like so and it's still got clearance around I'll probably put a bit of liquid electrical tape on the connectors where the header pins are soldered just to uh, prevent that shorting on the carbon fibre if the hot glue breaks and uh, that's that's uh, ready for the next step I've just put this side plate in temporarily just to show you there's the USB port of the flight controller visible through the hole in the side plate so I've got the correct height there I'm just going to pull that out now if I can and uh, I'll remove the flight controller and I've just put some of these uh, barrel standoffs they're a hollow uh, standoff and I just screw them over the top and that will set the height for the flight controller with the arrow of the flight controller pointing towards the front this will end up mounted like so now take the lower base plate, the 2mm one, that has the slots here for the battery strap to pass through and uh, grab a file and file the, uh, the inside edge where the battery strap is going to pass over uh, to uh, help prevent damage to it later. Now assemble the base, so your base plate, the filed edge on, on, uh, on the top here place uh, this over the top. Uh, note that these slots here for the side plates need to be running the same direction as the battery strap slots. So we'll sit that on top like so. Now take our top base plate and sit that over and uh, then an arm, wedge an arm in there and drop some screws through a couple of the holes. Now towards the end, the last arm, they might start getting a bit tight, so just uh, use an Allen key if you need to. Now I'll put a couple of nuts uh, on these, the nylock nuts. There's just two screws in each arm. These only need to be just done up finger tight for the moment, it's just to hold things together. Now you should see that the slots for the side plates in this top plate and the middle plate line up. So if you want to check, take one of your side plates and just make sure it slides in there. We're going to fit these later, but uh, you want to make sure the slots line up now before we go any further. I've mounted a motor on here just temporarily. Uh, just to check clearances and it's a very tight fit for these KISS 24 amp ESCs. I can't afford for these ends to touch on the carbon fibre here because they will short circuit so I'm going to have to put a couple of millimetre gap in here and that only leaves me some very short motor wires on this end. But uh, in setting up the ESCs and wiring them up I'm going to aim just to have a probably a about a two millimeter gap, one and a half, two millimeter gap uh, in here, and then use the heat shrink that I put on the ESCs that curls around to prevent the ESC from sliding back and touching on the carbon fiber. I just used some blue tack to gently hold the ESCs in position and maintain my one and a half, two millimeter gap behind them there. 
while I set up the power wires. The power wires come in from the back and from the front, not from the sides because the, uh, the side plates still need to be fitted there. I've attached my battery pigtail and XT60. You'll notice the red wire is shorter than the black and that's so when it tucks around underneath they, uh, the, they end up uh, an even length. I used my battery to work out how long uh, to make it and uh, then I've added a short uh, pigtail here, a cable from the auxiliary one which is battery voltage effectively and that will deliver the, the battery voltage to the V-in port on the flight controller. I'm not going to wire it up just yet but uh, I've prepared that for later. Now it's a bit of a mess here in front of me but let me try and show you what I'm up to with the receiver. This is an X4R S-Bus receiver that I've de-pinned. You can buy the naked version which would make this a lot easier. I've used the angled header pins that came with the 12 volt Palolo Beck. I didn't need them for that so uh, I've got three of this, this uh, row of header pins here. What I did is I've slipped the uh, heat shrink over, this is 16mm heat shrink, pushed these down through the heat shrink to make a hole in it, then inserted a pencil from the back to give some room to get the soldering iron in, and I carefully soldered those header pins in. So the header pins are outside of the heat shrink, but uh, they're soldered through, so when I heat this up and it uh, shrinks, I'll have a pretty much a sealed little receiver with the header pins on the outside. Now I'm temporarily building up the stack. I haven't finished with the flight controller yet. It'll still be coming off, but uh, taking some short little standoffs here, and uh, they're going to hold the flight controller in place. I've soldered a header, uh, or sorry, a uh, servo lead onto the flight controller for the receiver input, and also the telemetry wire. I've taken the receiver and cable tied it to a carbon fiber plate that has to be purchased separately, it doesn't come in the kit. And uh, now get this around the right way. It's, it's going to come up through there like so. That'll plug in and this will come over the top like this. So that's how I judge the uh, the cable length and uh, that's how it will end up sitting with this all, uh, all screwed down. Now uh, I need to go back and finish off the flight controller. Just note that I haven't connected my voltage in input yet, it's still sitting here idle, that'll, uh, that'll still come later. What I'm doing is uh, taking a whole bunch of uh, servo cable, attaching, soldering one end on to the, the, uh, the each output one at a time, in this case uh, PWM1 or for ESC number one, which happens to be this one, is our front here. So now I'll work out where to cut that off. So it's going to be routed underneath Put the flight controller in place and uh, just cut it off with a bit to spare there we go now I'll take that off I'm not going to solder this end on yet I'm going to do the same for number two three and four and then I'll uh, mount the flight controller and solder them to the ESC's um, after I've soldered this into the back of the flight controller. So I've finished soldering my servo leads on here and then I've gone ahead finally and attached the voltage input from the auxiliary one here, battery voltage, into the flight controller and soldered that in place. Now I can route the cables and attach the standoffs. I soldered the 
ESC wires on, the servo leads from the flight controller to each of the ESCs and then I have inserted the side plates, slid them down into the, uh, into the frame then I have tightened or inserted the rest of these screws and tightened them up all tight once the side plates were in don't do the screws up first because you probably won't get the side plates in so once they've been done up then I've uh, tightened up these little side screws one on each side and uh, look there's no real trick to that I find uh, well, you have to use Loctite but I find that if you try and hold this with a very a uh, small pair of pliers, hold the nut there, slide the screw up through the base and uh, you can normally do them up pretty easily. Uh, then I've realised that this yellow wire probably isn't best poking out the, the front of the flight controller. Uh, it'll probably snap off, it's a pretty stiff wire. So I desoldered it, turned it around and I'm going to run it back over the flight controller like this. And I've just put a bit of hot glue over the top of it to, uh, to hold it down and ensure it doesn't snap off at the solder joint. These other wires aren't so uh, susceptible to that, they're uh, heavier gauge and a bit more flexible. Then I've taken some 16mm heat shrink and cut four pieces for the ESCs. I've just temporarily fit one of the motors with a couple of screws just to gauge the uh, the wire length that I need. So all the blue tack's been removed from the ESCs and uh, I've worked out that I basically need to cut these motor wires very very short to be able to get onto the ESC. Another option if you wanted to keep them longer you could uh, loop them over the top of the ESC and, and come back to the uh, come back to the solder pad but um, yeah I'd prefer just to do it this way. So I've gone ahead and cut all the motor wires to that same length, uh, basically very very short and uh, tinned them with a bit of solder ready to go onto the ESCs. Now while I've at this point I decided because I won't be able to slide the the heat shrink back to get to the JP1 terminal for the, for the ESCs where I need to reverse motor direction I've gone ahead and soldered that up now fingers crossed that I've soldered the right ones I'm pretty confident after using these ESCs and motors for six or eight other builds that uh, it's motors number uh, one and three so ESCs one and three uh, remembering that the sequence or the numbering sequence is different for KISS uh, than uh, as it is for clean flights. I'll slide some heat shrink over and then I will solder the motor wires to the ESC then uh, get the heat gun out and close off the heat shrink then screw the motors down into place using Loctite on the motor screws. Before I closed off the heat shrink I thought I would just check uh, my motor direction. So I've just put one screw in each motor just to hold them in place and then I've uh, bound it to the Tyrannus transmitter. Then come to the KISS GUI and uh, plugged into that and set up the flight controller to look for the Free Sky receiver. And then I've been able to arm the quad and confirm the motor direction. So motor number one here, so this is there's my little front sticker down there somewhere. Uh, this is the front. Uh, motor number one is uh, turning clockwise. Motor number two, anti-clockwise. Motor number three, clockwise. And motor number four is turning anti-clockwise. The motors are now all affixed using all four screws with uh, Loctite on them and I've taped the ESCs to the arms. So that uh, part of the build is now complete. 
I've turned my attention to the VDO and VTX equipment now. So the uh, VTX has been wrapped in some 16mm heat shrink and I deliberately run it a fair bit up the stem here and just over this, uh, this lip of the, the brass plug and that helps, uh, helps just to act as a, a bit of a shock absorber against the frame when it's passed through and uh, takes up a little bit of the gap that's left there. So the VTX has been prepared and I've also been able to attach the HS1177 camera to the standard factory camera plate. I've done it in two ways. I've put uh, some hot glue all the way around on both sides and I've also used a cable tie uh, around uh, the screw here. I put the, uh, the HS1177 factory screws in the side and a cable tie so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, remembering that this is a top mount HS1177, not a bottom mount, which uh, is, it makes this build a little bit easier. So now that'll be uh, put in place, and let's slide it through, flare this out, and there we go. Camera is now in place, and a uh, bit of hot glue strings there. I'll uh, now prepare the wiring for the camera and the VTX which uh, will be drawing its power from the small pins that I uh, put uh, standing up the front here way back at the, at the start of the build so that'll be the 12 volt power through the LC filter and uh, that's where the power will come from for those two components and then the VTX will be put in there and I'll come back to you shortly. On the VTX cable, I don't need to use any of these wires here. These are the microphone uh, inputs and power outputs for the camera. But the uh, camera is going to get its power from the same place as the VTX. So all of these will get cut off flush with the plug. I used to take the connectors out. I used to uh, lift up the uh, the little tab here and pull the wires out but I found that by leaving them in there it helps this uh, keep a nice firm grip on the VTX and the plug doesn't come loose. I have my video power and uh, video cable made that uh, connects to power VTX and HS1177 camera. Time to put that in. The antenna cable will get routed up behind the camera the green standoffs are in place now and they are what hold tension on the two side plates uh, to give some friction to the camera plate. Now uh, I've put them in a position or this one in particular in a position that I can still get in here and open the hood or bonnet uh, and that gives me access to the channel or frequency button just under here on the VTX and uh, allows me access to see you know, if I need to do any running repairs. Uh, so I'll push that back, back down there. Now the VTX antenna is screwed on. I'll show you a little trick uh, on how to retain this in position. I've put a cable tie around the uh, antenna. I'm going to pass this through here. Bear with me here and pull this out of the way and I'm going to pass it back through if I can, this little hole down here so if you can see that I've got the cable tie running around now that seems useless because uh, it's zip tied on to there but over here I have an old cable tie that I've cut off I just want this end little piece now I'm going to slide that 
over while I'll, if I do that, I'm just going to trim a bit of the excess off. Now I'm going to tighten that up. Now that can't fit through the little hole, so now this is stuck in that position there. It's uh, going to hold the antenna. I used to go from here through that hole, but the problem was that the antenna then ends up uh, angled too far forwards for angled flight. So I want it uh, to come around the back of this, uh, this green standoff, and uh, that does a good job, I think. Now to put these antennas on. To hold the receiver antennas in place, I just put a cable tie around the frame just in front of uh, just in front of this this green standoff through the slot there. So there's one on this side. I've already put one on this side and put heat shrink over it. Now, they're uh, probably a little bit floppy and possibility they'll fall in the props, so to still maintain my diversity and uh, keep them out of the props, cross them over. So the final steps in the build process were to fit the battery strap followed by the battery pad foam. Uh, putting that on second means you have the hole underneath to guide the strap through. Then I've put some props on it and uh, I've also uh, plugged it into the KISS GUI and uh, just put some initial PIDs in there. And now it's time to weigh it. So with uh, the quad fully built with uh, all the bits and pieces. It comes in at 324 grams without a battery, 325 maybe. And uh, with a 1300 4S flight battery that I've been weighing them all with, 499 grams. So <laughs> didn't quite break the 500 gram barrier. As you've seen, the build process is, uh, is pretty straightforward as long as you leave these side plates off until towards the end of having your electronic stack complete. It, uh, it certainly makes life a lot easier. It's a, it's a tight build height-wise, but uh, yeah, as long as you keep that in mind, it's pretty straightforward.